hey guys so in this lecture i will explain you what is a data context property in wpf now in my previous lecture i have explained you all about data bindings in wpf so what are various modes of data binding that happen in wpf but to do data binding in wpf you need to understand data context property in wpf this is because data context property is the source of all the bindings so if you are binding any element to any other element you are not actually binding to that element you are binding it to the data context property of that element so all these points will be clear once we look into the, our demo so let's jump into a slides of data context property so wpf uses a dependency property called as data context property so always remember data context property is a dependency property now if any other source is not specified for data bindings then wpf by default searches for the data context and if you don't specify the data context of, of that binding then uh, that binding will be null by default so let's jump into our demo and let's see what i mean by these all points so here i have a very simple ui and it uh, let me explain you the ui first i have got a grid and i have uh, two columns in that grid and then I have three rows in that grid okay and the first column I have three text blocks okay uh, telling me the first name last name and age and in the second column I have the corresponding text boxes for those text block so let me run this application and show you how this UI looks so this looks like this first name last name and age so it's a very simple ui and if you need to learn about layouting in wpf then you need to watch my one of the earlier videos in which i have explained the layouting in wpf in detail so this is a very simple ui and let's add a class in our project and then let's add three properties first name last name and age and age and then let's try to bind those properties onto the ui so let me add a class first so let's add a class and let me name that class as person class okay and let me make this class as public class and let me add three properties so first will be string first name and similarly I have two more properties first second one will be the last name and this will be each and the return type of this property will be integer now let's go to the code behind of this project and onto the constructor let's initialize this class so let's have this person class obj equals new person okay and let me initialize these fields so first name should be say john last name should be say smith john smith and then let's have age so let's have age equals say 30 okay so the first name is john last name is smith and age is 30 now let's go to our xaml file and bind these properties onto this text boxes so let me have this binding markup and let me specify a path and property should be first name okay same goes with this text box so binding path should be last name okay and similarly here path should be age right and let's try to run this now and according to our bindings the value should be john smith and 30 but it's showing me nothing that means there is something wrong and why it's not displaying me any any properties onto these text boxes that's because i have not set data context of this 
person object so by default if you don't specify a data context on on to the your bindings your bindings will be null and this is what i have specified in my slides so let's move to our slides and you can see the third point there is no default source for the data context property if you need to assign it some value otherwise binding will be null so this is what what is happening in our case so let's try to bring this john smith onto our ui and this is this could be done in very simple manner you just need to specify this dot data context equals the obj right so i am i have just specified the data context to be this object right so this first name last name and age is stored onto this object and the data context of this window is now this obj so let's try to run this now and see and you can see here john smith and 30 has bound to my ui so this is how you can achieve data bindings if you are binding a object onto the ui you can also do uh, do this in this way that is you can take this code block from here and you can just remove this thing okay so i'm directly setting whatever be the object I'm directly setting that data context onto this person class. So let's try to run this again and see. You can see John Smith and 30 have bound to our screen. So whenever you are binding any object onto the screen, remember always to set data context, otherwise your bindings will be null. And always remember data context is a dependency property. So let's move to our slides. These are the four important points regarding data context property of WPF. So thank you so much guys for listening. If you have any doubt, please leave a comment below and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so very much.